Welcome to lesson 21 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 3 in the section on hydraulic motors. In this lesson we will be talking about axial piston motors. Now we already covered axial piston pumps and their working principle. The thing is, hydraulic axial piston motors work on the same principle. The only thing is, with pumps we had units that convert mechanical input energy to fluid flow energy and with axial piston motors we have units that convert fluid flow energy into mechanical output energy. So the motors take the high pressure fluid in the inlet, the high pressure fluid moves the pistons and we get rotation on the output. If you forgot about axial piston units you should go back to section 1 and review the two lessons on axial piston pumps. Now axial piston motors and all motors from the rotational hydraulic motors group are used when we need to have rotational movement on the output. Axial piston motors are motors which don't have best torque characteristics. In spite of this they are one of the most used hydraulic motors. Now these units have very high specific power which is basically the mass divided by the power of the motor. They work on very high pressures up to 400 or 500 bars and they work on relatively high RPMs. They're very fast. And in most cases axial piston units are reversible units. What does that mean? Well it means that some of the axial piston pumps can work as motors. However this has to be taken with a grain of salt because there are still some constructional solutions which don't allow this reversibility or they allow it but the efficiency factor would be really really low. They're often used in a combination with a mechanical transmission. Now the idea of a reversible unit is pretty great because you have a pump and it can basically function as a motor as well. Now we can divide axial piston motors into two groups. Group number one is the bent axis piston motors which we can see in this picture right here and inline piston motors which we can see right here or swashplate motors. Now of course the bent axis piston motors can be with an adjustable angle so we can have a variable displacement motor and they can be with a fixed angle. This right here is with the fixed angle. You can see the casing of the motor is fixed that can not be changed so this is not an adjustable piston motor. Now the displacement of the inline piston motors depends on the swash plates angle. We can see the swash plate right here. And those swash plates can also be fixed or variable. Of course if they're variable we have an adjustable piston motor and if they're not, if they're fixed, we can't adjust the displacement of the motor. Now here we can see a cutaway diagram of a bent axial piston motor and its parts. You can see the cylinder block here on number 2 and the distributor on number 1. So this is the distributor right here and we can see how the distributor looks from the frontal view. So on the distributor we have the inlet port and we have the outlet port. On number 3 you can see the piston. On number 4 the piston rod which connects the piston and the flange which you can see on number 5. On number 6 you can see the connecting drive shaft and if you remember the working principle from the piston pumps the only difference here is that the input and output are reversed. So the pressurized oil fills the cavities in the cylinder pushing the pistons which with their piston rods act upon the flange, upon the disc and a parallel component of thrust causes a flange to turn. This angle right here is the angle with which we can adjust the displacement of the motor. Now the maximum displacement for this motor is a certain angle gamma, right? If the bent axis motor has the value of gamma zero, so zero degrees, if it sits in line with the cylinder block displacement is zero. And when the angle gamma is at a maximum point we have the maximum torque for this axial motor. Now here we can see another 
picture of a bent axis motor. So fluid pressure at inlet generates thrust on pistons. So we have the fluid, the pressurized fluid entering our motor, pushing the pistons, which then thrust on shaft flange and they generate rotation of the output shaft. And then we have the pistons which are going back and they're pushing the fluid to the outlet port. Now on this slide we can see a cutaway diagram of an inline axial piston motor or a swashplate axial piston motor. In this case this is an adjustable swashplate so it is an adjustable motor and this is a unit with plungers and not pistons. Now the distributor part is kind of the same. Here we have plungers instead of pistons and here we have a swash plate which is connected to a little adjuster which can adjust the angle of this swash plate. So again when we have the gamma angle at a zero displacement is zero nothing moves so imagine this swash plate standing like this right and rotating around and nothing is happening because the plungers are going to stay in the same place they're not going to reciprocate so we're not gonna have mechanical movement now inline axis piston type motors these motors are almost identical to the pumps now there are built-in fixed and variable displacement models and torque is developed by a pressure drop in these units now pressure exerts a force on the ends of the pistons or plungers which is translated into shaft rotation. The shaft rotation of most models can be reversed anytime by reversing the flow direction which means basically the inlet port becomes the outlet port and vice versa. So oil from the pump is forced into the cylinder bores through a motor's inlet port. Force on the piston at this point pushes it against the swash blade and they can move only by sliding along the swash blade to a point further away from a cylinder's barrel which causes it to rotate. We already said so the motor's displacement depends on the angle of the swash blade. At maximum angle displacement is at its highest because the pistons travel at maximum length. When the angle is reduced piston travel shortens reducing the displacement. Now if you wanted to calculate the torque of an axial piston motor this is the equation you would use. Now this is theoretical torque which is larger than the real torque you're gonna get and the lower case d is the diameter of the pistons or plungers. Uppercase d with a d in the index is the diameter of the circle on which the pistons or plungers are arrayed on the flange. In other words this this is the circular array okay and this would be a circle right and this is the diameter of that circle so that is uppercase d and of course gamma is the angle of the swash plate delta p we already talked about that that is achieved pressure difference okay now let's talk a little bit about the properties of axial piston motors now the pros of these motors are that they are very efficient units they have high efficiency factors they have small dimensions which means we can fit them anywhere they're robust and they have the option to be adjustable with adjusting the angle of the swash blade or the angle at which the bent axis motor is positioned and we can add here that some are some some axial piston units are reversible machines that means they can work in a pump or motor regime the cons of axial piston motors are that they deliver small torque values they're complex to manufacture and the complexity of manufacturing those units also translates to them being very expensive and they're pretty noisy units now these are rough estimates of technical parameters for these kinds of motors. Now the maximum torque is around 600 newton meters. The speed at which they operate is from 100 to 3000 rotations per minute. 
The maximum pressure at which these motors work is around 400 bars. The efficiency factor for these units is from 0.9 to 0.96 and the specific power or specific mass is from 0.5 to 3 kilograms per kilowatt. Now this is just the mass divided by the power. Okay, that is what specific power is. And that is it for axial piston motors. Thank you for listening and being focused and see you in the next lesson.